Hello, everyone. Welcome to Upper Room Ministries uh, Sunday School here in Dover, Pennsylvania. So glad that you've uh, tuned in to join us today. We are continuing our expository study on the book of Proverbs. We uh, completed uh, chapter 8 last time. So now we shall begin with uh, chapter 9. All right. We'll first examine the first 12 verses of chapter 9, uh, as they are called the way of wisdom. Verse 1. Wisdom has built her house. She has hewn out her seven pillars. She has slaughtered her meat. She has mixed her wine. She has also furnished her table. She has sent out her maidens. She cries out from the highest places of the city. Whoever is simple, let him turn in here. As for him who lacks understanding, she says to him, Come, eat of my bread, and drink of the wine I have mixed. mixed. Forsake foolishness and live, and go the way of understanding. So, wisdom is not just simply calling out to the wise, but she is also uh, calling out to the simple, to uh, the foolish, to those who presently lack understanding. And why not? Because they're the, they're the ones that need her the most. And I look at how uh, this has been worded. She has slaughtered her meat. She has mixed her wine. She has also furnished her table. She has sent out her maidens. She cries out from the highest places of the city. And when I read this, it makes me think of the parable of the Great Supper that uh, Jesus uh, told in the book of Luke. Let's, let's, let's go there for a bit. Luke chapter 14, starting in verse uh, 15. Now, when one of those who sat at the table with him heard these things, he said to him, Blessed is he who shall eat the bread of the kingdom. Then he, Jesus, said to him, A certain man gave a great supper and invited many. And he sent his servant at supper time to say to those who were invited, Come, for all things are now ready. But they all with one accord began to make excuses. The first said to him, I have bought a piece of ground and I must go see it. I ask you to have me excused. And another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen and I'm going to test them. I ask you to have me excused. Still another said, I have married a wife and therefore cannot come. So the servant came and reported these things to his master. Yeah, it's very, very uh, similar. You know, here, you know, the master has prepared great great supper and um, he sends out uh, invitations uh, to many to uh, come you know it's it's the same thing it's the same uh, context that's uh, being portrayed uh, here with wisdom you know wisdom has prepared a great supper and uh, wisdom is um, is calling out, sending out to sending out the invitations, and uh, the invitations include the simple and the ones who are lack understanding, lack understanding, shall we say, the unwise, the uh, dregs of uh, society. And then you go back to uh, the parable of the Great Supper, and uh, the master's uh, response to. Um, all of his invitees making excuses for not come is then the master of the house being angry said to a servant go out quickly into the streets and lanes of the city and bring here the poor and the maimed and the lame and the blind and the servant said master it is as done as you commanded and still there is room then the master said to the servant go out into the highways and hedges and compel them to come in that my house may be filled. So, again, very similar. Wisdom is calling out uh, for the ones who don't know her. And um, the uh, master 
is calling out uh, to the ones uh, that really don't know him as they first weren't originally invited. So, again, very, very similar. And um, is this just simply coincidence? No, I don't think so. Because one truly, truly needs uh, wisdom and understanding to come to Jesus, to come to the Master. Because, quite simply, I mean, if he's just uh, plain foolish, you know, he's not going to bother to come. He's not going to recognize the invitation that's been presented to him. As it says in the word, the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. And uh, something else uh, to understand, uh, Jesus said in John chapter 6, No one can come unto me unless the Father draws him. You know, there has to be that invitation from God, that drawing power from God in order to come to Jesus because on our own we're not looking for it. We're not. We're just not. So, in order to come in order to truly come to Jesus, in order truly to come to the Master's Supper, one needs to respond uh, to that uh, calling. Meaning they have to have some, some bit of wisdom, some bit of understanding to at the very least step out in faith and come. Foolishness will keep you away from the Master. Foolishness will keep you uh, away from getting saved. And thus wisdom, again says in verse uh, 6, forsake foolishness and live and go in the way of understanding. Uh, let's continue. Verse 7. Wisdom says, He who corrects a scoffer gets shame for himself, and he who rebukes a wicked man only harms himself. She's saying there is no point in trying to go, uh, trying to correct a scoffer or a wicked man. They're only setting themselves up for trouble because a scoffer, the wicked man, they don't want to listen to correction. They don't want to listen to instruction. They want to stay just as they are. And so, why then try to share correction and wisdom and understanding to somebody who doesn't want to receive it? You know, you're just setting yourself up for trouble. But she continues in verse 9, I mean verse 8, Do not correct a scoffer, lest he hate you. Rebuke a wise man, and he will love you. Yes, uh, only, only the ones who already have wisdom can truly receive correction. You know, they have enough sense to realize that they don't know everything. And uh, they also have enough sense to realize that the way things are going for them aren't working and they need to do something different. They're not busy pointing the finger at everybody else. No, they're accepting responsibility and that takes wisdom. Therefore, such a person will receive um, correction and, and rebukes. Okay, verse nine, give instruction to a wise man and he will still, and he will be still wiser. Teach a just man, and he will increase in learning. So again, the Bible is making making it clear. You know what's what's required to receive wisdom and instruction. And um, and despite your best intentions, some people are just so blinded by foolishness they're not going to listen to you, and. You just shouldn't waste your time with them. No. Spend your time with folks that will actually listen to, to correction, to rebukes, and instruction. Verse 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. Yeah, to understand this world, this universe, uh, really begins with knowing God, you know, and uh, having a biblical worldview of the universe. 
It's from having that worldview that you truly gain understanding. You truly gain truth about why everything is here. If you choose to have this atheistic uh, worldview, you'll uh, you'll be deceived. You know, you'll believe lies about uh, everything. All right, verse eleven. For for by me your days will be multiplied, and years of life will be added to you. If you are wise, you are wise for yourself. And if you are and if you scoff, you will bear it alone. Alright. That's the way of wisdom. Okay, then we come to uh, the remaining verses, verses 13 through 18. This talks about uh, the way of folly. And uh, it's basically a parody of the uh, first uh, six verses of uh, chapter 9. Starting in verse 13. A foolish woman is clamorous. She is simple and knows nothing, for she sits she sits at the door of her house on a seat by the highest places of the city. No, she's not sitting in the highest places. She is sitting next to the highest places. Another way of saying she's not in the highest places. Verse 15, to call to those who pass by, who go straight on their way, whoever is simple, let him turn in here. And as for him who lacks understanding, she says to him, stolen water is sweet, and bread eaten in secret is pleasant. So just as wisdom is calling out to those who are simple and lack understanding, so is folly. Folly is also calling out to them. Except uh, folly is uh, telling them uh, lies. Verse 17, those lies are stolen water is sweet, and bread eaten in secret is pleasant. That's what Folly says. But, but the consequences are told in verse 18. But he does not know that the dead are there, and that her guests are in the depths of hell. Yes. Again, the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. And if that's how you uh, choose to go on believing, you too are going to end up uh, in the depths of hell as well. All right, now we uh, come to chapter 10. And here we begin the uh, wise sayings of Psalm, his Proverbs. Now, as we uh, discussed um, in the first part of this um, study, Solomon wrote many more Proverbs than uh, are actually in here. Why those problems aren't included uh, in Scripture, I don't know. Nevertheless, the ones that are, are in here because God wanted them in here. And, and so we must uh, pay attention to, to these Proverbs and uh, really believe the, uh, the wisdom and the good advice they contain. Chapter 10, verse 1. The Proverbs of Solomon. A wise son makes a glad father, but a foolish son is the grief of his mother. Okay. So, the child uh, receives wisdom, lives by it. He goes on and becomes a man that uh, his father is proud of. If, uh, if on the other hand, the son uh, refuses wisdom, rebukes it, and is just content to living a foolish life, he becomes a grief of his mother. It's understandable. Makes all kinds of bad decisions. Uh, never really amounts to anything. That's, uh, that's a great burden for parents to bear. You know, children who keep uh, messing up because uh, they, didn't, uh, they didn't adhere to uh, the wisdom that was shared uh, to them by their parents. Verse 2. Treasures of wickedness profit nothing, but righteousness delivers from death. Hmm. Treasures of wickedness profit nothing. That's, um, the word that really stands out to me here is the word uh, profit, because it makes uh, me think of 
you know, for what would it profit a man to gain the whole world and yet lose his own soul? You know, pursuit of the world's treasures at the expense of your own soul, there is no profit. And thus, and thus lines up with this, with what this says, treasures of the wickedness profit nothing. Okay, but righteousness delivers from death. The Lord will not allow the righteous soul to famish, but he casts away the desire of the wicked. Now that's something to uh, cling to. The Lord will not allow the righteous soul to vanish. So, even when uh, things are bad for the righteous soul, even when the circumstances are not positive, you know, the Lord will find some way to keep your soul from uh, famishing, famishing. As it says in Psalms 23, He restoreth my soul. Now, he's not going to restore a soul that is in, not in need of restoring. It has to be like, uh, it has to be uh, close to famishing in order for it to need to be restored. So, so that implies that uh, the righteous, um, it's not always going to be good. You know, there are going to be tough times where you um, endure loss endure sadness and grief and all kinds of terrible things. But the Lord promises he will not let your soul famish. He will restore it. Okay. Verse 4. He who has a slack hand becomes poor, but the hand of the diligent makes rich. He who gathers in summer is a wise son. He who sleeps in harvest is a son who causes Shame. You know, the subject of uh, diligence and laziness is going to be brought up uh, many times in the book of Proverbs. Thus, uh, reiterating the point, uh, you know, if you want to have anything in this world, you got to work for it. And too many people, uh, they want things, but they don't want to work for them. You know, they just want to uh, expect everything handed to them. And if it doesn't work out that way, they blame other, they blame everybody but themselves. That's foolishness, plain and simple. You want something, you gotta work for it. Yeah. Verse six. Blessings are on the head of the righteous, but violence covers the mouth of the wicked. Hmm. Blessings are on the head of the righteous. Now. In this, uh, in this culture, the head is considered the most important part of the body. I mean, in this culture, the head, when a man dresses, he always starts with the head and then works himself on down. So, blessing on the, blessings on the head, you know, that's just the best kind of blessings because your most important part is being blessed. But violence covers the mouth of the wicked. Now, that's another, that's another, uh, that's another thing that Proverbs uh, discusses in great, in great detail. The mouth. The words that come out of the mouth. And you'll really grow to understand just how dangerous uh, the mouth of the wicked uh, can be. And uh, how serious the consequences are for people who uh, use their mouth uh, for wickedness, for violence. Verse 7, the memory of the righteous is blessed, but the name of the wicked will rot. So, if you live righteous, you know, when you're gone, you're going to be remembered as a righteous man. But if you do wickedness, your name will be cursed, you know, not just from, not just by the people who knew you, but by future generations. They'll look upon, they'll think of your name and they'll just think, oh, what a bad, bad person he or she was. Even though they don't know them, they know of them. And they know that they must uh, shun that person. Okay? Because they don't want to become like them. Okay? Verse 8. 
The wise in heart will receive commands, but a prating fool will fall. Okay. A wise heart will receive commands. You now Jesus said that if you love me, you will keep my commands. Now, this doesn't imply that um, only the wise of heart, uh, God only sends commands to the wise in heart. I believe God sends commands to everybody, wise or foolish. But, but just because he sends commands to everyone doesn't mean they're all received. You know, you have to have a heart that is ready to receive anything from God. You know, including commands, including instructions. And if you're wise in heart, you will have enough sense to realize that uh, God talks to you and uh, you need to be ready to hear from him. If your heart is hardened, uh, you won't receive anything, any commands from God, because there's, the heart is so hard, it's unable to receive the instruction from God. Right? Which is why a prating fool will fall because he is right now incapable of receiving commands from God. Right. Verse 9. He who walks with integrity walks securely, but he who perverts his ways will become known. Mm -hmm. another, that's, which is another way of saying uh, you live perversion. Eventually your perversion will find you out and you will be exposed for it. But if you walk with integrity, you have no fear of anybody finding you out because you've got nothing to hide. That's how it works. Verse 10. He who winks with the eye causes trouble, but a prating fool will fall. The mouth of the righteous is a well of life, but violence covers the mouth of the wicked. Again, points are being, uh, are being reiterated here. 12. Hatred stirs up strife, but love covers all sins. Love covers all sins. You know? Jesus died and shed his blood so that our sins could be covered. Our sins could be uh, cleansed. And why did he do it? You know, because he loves us. And, you know, when it comes to forgiveness... When it comes to forgiving, when it comes to uh, forgiving others, the motivation of, for of forgiveness is love, a desire to forgive of uh, someone of their wrongdoing. Now I realize that forgiving someone does not mean a re does not mean uh, a relationship can be uh, reconciled. Sometimes that's just not possible. But you know. But still, it requires love for that person simply because they're a human being to uh, set them free of their wrongdoing. And it also takes uh, love for yourself, you know, to set yourself free from that anger and from that bitterness. Yeah. And, uh, and, it, and it also requires a love for God, too, because you have the understanding that it's something God wants you to do. You know, Jesus said, if you love me, you'll keep my commands. And one of Jesus' commands is to forgive your brother. Yeah. If, he, uh, if your brother repents, tell him to his face that you forgive him. If your brother sins and he doesn't repent, well, you don't, uh, you don't need to tell your brother to his face that you forgive him. But still, you need to, con you need to tell God that you forgive him. You still need to be willing to forgive him. You don't have to say it to him, but for but for uh, but for God's sake, you need to. Okay. Thirteen, wisdom is found on the lips of him who has understanding, but a rod is for the back of him who is devoid of understanding. Wise people store up knowledge, but the mouth of the foolish is near destruction. The rich man's wealth is his strong city. The destruction of the poor is their poverty. Um, you now, poverty is a curse. 
And God does not want anybody living in uh, poverty. You know, some people uh, think that uh, being a question require, require, means you can't be rich, you can't be uh, well off. Well, he doesn't want us to be rich if, uh, if riches uh, become an idol, of course. But uh, at the same time, he doesn't want us in a place where our needs are not being met. met. He doesn't want us in poverty either. You know, because poverty too can become an idol because you're so focused on your lack. You know, that... Um, that you don't give any mind to uh, God. And uh, if you're living in poverty, you're, you certainly can't be a good witness for God because they'll look at your uh, impoverishment and just say, well, why would I want to uh, serve a God that just leaves you in poverty? Okay? All right, verse 16. The labor of the righteous leads to life, the wages of the wicked to sin. He who keeps instruction is in the way of life, but he who refuses correction goes astray. As the labor of the righteous leads to life, he who keeps instruction is in the way of life. So righteousness and instruction, they go together. You know, instruction helps keep you on the righteous on the uh, on the path of righteousness. And instruction is found uh, in here. That's why it's so important to meditate on the word. 18. Whoever hides hatred has lying lips, and whoever uh, spreads slander is a fool. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you hate somebody but uh, don't want to reveal it, you'll just uh, say positive things about that person, either to others or to their face, and it'll all be lies because that's not really how you feel about them. So your hatred is causing you to become a liar as well. And uh, God wants us to deal with that hatred. And that's why he wants us to forgive others of their sins. You know, and um, sometimes uh, we, get, we hate people without cause. So we've got to surrender that to him so that we can be set free of that hatred and love our neighbor like we're supposed to. Okay, verse 19. In the multitude of words, sin is not lacking, but he who restrains his lips is wise. The tongue of the righteous is choice silver, the heart of the wicked is worth little, the lips of the righteous feed many, but fools <coughs> die for lack of wisdom. Again, this is all we'll talk, again, lots of focus on the mouth. The words of the righteous and the words of the wicked. Yep. Verse 19 says, the multitude of words, sin is not lacking. You know, some people just babble on and on and on and on. Talk, 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 talk. And it's all useless. It's all just a waste of time. And, um... You know, God has no uh, tolerance for somebody who just wants to babble about nothing. Yeah. So, um, a babbler, somebody who can spend one to two hours on the phone just talking about themselves, that's not good, and uh, it's best not to encourage them to babble. All right, verse 22, The blessing of the Lord makes one rich, and he adds no sorrow with it. So, with all the blessings of the Lord, you can uh, count on there will be no sorrow attached to it. That's just not his way. All right, well, that's all the time we have for today. Thank you so much for joining us, and we'll uh, continue in chapter 10 uh, next time.